Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Higher Revision video for 65 days going to your GCSE Maps exam and today we're going to be focusing on the topic of similar shapes. And I really like this topic and it's where a shape, perhaps a two-dimensional shape or even a three-dimensional shape has been enlarged. And we might need to look and find different sides or even surface areas or volumes off the different shapes. If you go to the Code Maps Revision card, card number 72 is the card in similar shapes and it'd be really useful for you. So in this video, we're going to look at similar shapes. I'm going to go through some questions on how to do them, and then there'll be some for you to try as well. So remember to pause the video and to give those questions a shot. So let's get started. Okay, today we're going to be looking at similar shapes. So here's part of the Copenhagen Revision Card, and this is really important information, that if you enlarge a shape by scale factor n, so if the scale factor for the size is n, the scale factors for the area or surface area would be n squared, and the scale factor for the volumes would be n cubed. So for instance, if you have enlarged a shape and the sides are five times bigger perhaps, the areas, well, you do 5 squared is 25, so the areas would be 25 times bigger. So, for instance, if you had a rectangle and you enlarge it by scale factor 5, the area of the bigger one would be 25 times bigger than the area of the smaller one. And if perhaps it was a cuboid and you made the lengths 5 times bigger, the volume of the bigger cuboid, well, if you enlarge it by scale factor 5, you do 5 cubed, which is 125. So the volume of the bigger cuboid would be 125 times larger than the smaller cuboid. So that's really important information if you've got window pens right on your window or if you've got a cheat sheet and so on. Let's have a look at some questions and make sure we understand this. So here we've got a trapezium and another trapezium. And then one's an enlargement of the other. As you can see, the sides are 3 times larger. The length of this parallel side is 5 and the length of this parallel side is 5. 15 so it's three times bigger so if we wanted to find the area of the bigger one if we know the area of the smaller one well because the sides are three times bigger well we square that and three squared is nine so that means the area of this bigger trapezium is nine times bigger than the smaller one so that means the area would be nine times bigger because three squared is nine because you square the scale factor of enlargement for the sides to get the scale factor of enlargement for the area now because the area of the larger one is nine times bigger than the smaller one the area of the smaller one is equal to 20 and 20 times 9 is equal to 180 so that means the area of this trapezium is 180 centimeters squared and that's it okay here's a question now for you to try yourself so we've got a small trapezium and a larger trapezium can you work out the area of this larger trapezium okay so to do that what we need to do is find out how many times bigger the sides are so we need to see how many times bigger the base of this trapezium is than this one so if we do 9 divided by 1.5 we can see the scale factor for the side so 9 divided by 1.5 is equal to 6 so this is 6 times bigger so that length is 6 times larger than that one so that means that the area of the bigger one will be 36 times bigger because 6 squared is equal to 36. So that means the area will be 36 times larger. So we just need to multiply this by 36. So because the scale factor for the sides is 6, and we square that, 6 squared is equal to 36, so that means the areas would be 36 times bigger. So 4 multiplied by 36 would be equal to 144. So the area of this larger trapezium would be 144 centimetres squared. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at another question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So this time we've got two cones, and we've got a smaller one and a larger one. And we've got the surface area for the smaller cone is 16 metres squared, and the surface area for the larger cone is 784 metres squared. And we've been asked to find the slant height of the larger cone. Now this is a bit different than the ones we've looked at so far because we've got surface areas, but we treat that the same as area, surface area, area. So let's find how many times bigger the surface area is. So if let's find the scale factor for the surface areas. So if we do 784 divided by 16, that'll tell us how many times larger the surface area is for the larger cone. So 784 divided by 16 is equal to 49. So that means the scale factor for the area, for the surface area, is 49. Now if the scale factor for the area is n squared, the scale factor for the sides would be n. So if you square root this, if you square root the 25, we get 5 here. So in this case, if we know the scale factor for the areas is 49, if we square root that, the square root of 49, the square root of 49 is equal to 7. So that means the sides would be 7 times larger. So it means this side would be 7 times larger than that one because we square root the scale factor for the areas. And the square root of 49 is 7. So that means this side would be 7 times larger than this one. And 7 times 2 is equal to 14. So that means that this slant height, this length here, would be 14 meters. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at a question now for you to try. So we've got two cuboids, and we've got a smaller one and a larger one. We've got the surface area for the smaller one is 6 centimetres squared, and the surface area for the larger one is 5,400 centimetres squared. And I want to find the length for the base of this cuboid, so this length here. And we're told that this one is 10 centimetres. So pause the video now and try this question. Okay, so let's start by finding the scale factor for the surface areas, or the areas. So let's do 5,400 divided by 6 to see how many times larger the surface area is for this one than this one. So 5,400 divided by 6 is equal to 900. So it's 900 times larger. The surface area of this one is 900 times larger than this one. 
So that means if we know the scale factor for the areas is n squared, we're going to square root that to find the scale factor for the sides. So we need to square root this 900. So the square root of 900, well, the square root of 900 would be equal to 30. So that means the sides of this shape are 30 times larger than the sides of this shape. So that means that if we multiply by 30, we're going to get 10. So we're going to work backwards. So we're going to do 10 divided by 30. And 10 divided by 30 is equal to a third, or 0.333, and so on. So the length of this one would be a third of a centimeter, or 0.333, and so on. And that's it. So the length of that cube, or the length of that side, is a third of a centimeter. And that's it. OK, so let's go back to the core mass revision card. So we've been focusing there on area and surface area. So we've been dealing with the scale factor for the sides being n, that the scale factor for the areas would be n squared. Now let's have a look at volume. So if we know the scale factor for the side, so let's have a look at this cuboid and this cuboid. As you can see, because the length of this cuboid is 7 centimeters, and the length of this cuboid is 14 centimeters. The scale factor for the sides is 2. So that means if we cube that, so 2 cubed, if we work out 2 cubed, 2 cubed is equal to 8, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So that means the volume of this cuboid would be 8 times larger than the volume of this one, because if the scale factor for the sides is 2, 2 cubed is 8, so that means the volumes would be 8 times larger. So if we look at the smaller cuboid, which has a volume of 100 centimeters cubed, if we multiply that by 8, that's equal to 800. So that means the volume of the larger cuboid would be 800 centimeters cubed, and that's it. So if the scale factor for the sides is n, the scale factor for the volumes is n cubed. So if you know how many times bigger the sides are, you cube that to find out how many times bigger the volumes would be. Okay, so let's have a look at a question now for you to try yourself. So we've got two square base pyramids. We've got a smaller one with a width of 3 centimeters and a larger one with a width of 9 centimeters. And the volume of the smaller one is 20 centimeters cubed. Can you work out the volume of the larger one? So press pause now and work out the volume of this larger square base pyramid. Okay, so if I was to do this question, I'd see what the scale factor for the sides would be. So 9 divided by 3 is equal to 3. So the sides are 3 times larger. So the scale factor for the sides is 3. So that means the scale factor for the volumes would be 3 cubed. And 3 cubed, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So that means the volume of the larger one will be 27 times larger than the volume of the smaller one. And so we'll just do 20 multiplied by 27, and that's equal to 540. So the volume of this one is 540 centimeters cubed. And that's it. So if you know the scale factor for the sides, we can find the scale factor for the volumes. Okay, let's have a look at another question. Okay, let's have a look at another question for you to try. So we've got two conical frustrums. So they're two frustrums. They're cones with the tops chopped off. So we've got two frustrums. We've got a smaller one and a larger one. We've got the volume of the smaller one being 6 centimeters cubed and the volume of the larger one being 750 centimeters cubed. And we've got the length of this part is 15 centimeters for the larger one. And you've been asked to find the length of that part for the smaller one. So feel free to press pause and try this question now yourself. Okay, so if I was doing this question, I want to see what the scale factor for the volumes would be. So I would look at the volumes, and I would do 750 divided by 6 to see what the scale factor for the volumes would be. So 750 divided by 6 is equal to 125. So that means the volume is 125 times larger. The volume of this one is 125 times larger than the volume of this one. Now, if we know the scale factor for the volumes is n cubed, then we can cube root that to find the scale factor for the sides. We're just going to go backwards and cube root it. So if we go to here and we cube root, 125, the cube root of 125 is 5. Because if the sides were 5 times bigger, 5 cubed would be 125. So that would be the scale factor for the volumes. So that means the sides are 5 times bigger. So in other words, we need to find what length this is. So what times 5 is equal to 15? Well, it's going to be 3. So the length of that bit is 3. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. OK, let's have a look at another question. OK, so this time we've got two pentagonal prisms. I'm testing myself here with the names of my solids. So here we've got a pentagonal prism, a smaller one and a larger one. And we've got the surface area of the smaller one and the surface area of the larger one. And we've got the volume of the smaller one, and we want to find the volume of the bigger one. So we're going to go back to the Cope Mars revision card here. If we know the scale factors for the sides is n, then the scale factors for the areas is n squared, and the scale factors for the volumes is n cubed. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this information. So let's go back to our shape and have a look. So we've got the surface area of the smaller one and the surface area of the bigger one. So let's find the scale factors for the areas. So let's see how many times bigger the surface area is. So let's do 1,200 divided by 300, and 1,200 divided by 300 is equal to 4. So that means the surface area of this one is 4 times larger than the surface area of this one, so multiply by 4. The surface area is 4 times larger. So if we know the scale factor for the surface areas is 4, we're going to square root that to find the scale factor for the sides, so we'll do that to begin with, and then we can cube that to get the scale factor for the volumes. So let's go back and find the scale factor for the sides. So we're going to do the square root of 4, and the square root of 4 is equal to 2. So that means that the lengths are 2 times larger. So for instance, if this was 7 centimeters, that would be 14 centimeters, and so on. So the scale factor for the sides is 2, because we've square rooted the scale factor for the areas.
Now we're going to cube this because if we cube the scale factor for the sides, we get the scale factor for the volumes. So 2 cubed is equal to 8. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So if the scale factor for the sides is 2, the scale factor for the areas would be 4, and the scale factors for the volume would be 8. So multiply by 8. So 600 multiplied by 8, or 600 multiplied by 8, is equal to 4,800 centimeters cubed. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at another question. Okay, so this is one for you to try now. We've got a smaller cuboid and a larger cuboid. We've been given the volumes this time, and I would like you to find the surface area of the smaller cuboid. Okay, so if I was doing this question, the first thing I would do is look at the volumes. So I'd find the scale factor for the volumes. So I'm going to do 540 divided by 20, and that's equal to 27. So that means the volumes are 27 times larger. So the volume of this one is 27 times larger than the volume of this one. So we now know the scale factor of enlargement for the volumes. We're going to cube root that to find the scale factor for the sides. So we're going to do the cube root of 27, and the cube root of 27 is equal to 3. So that means the sides would be 3 times larger than the sides of this one. So for instance, this had a height of 10, this would have a height of 30, and so on. And then if we square that, so 3 squared is equal to 9. So that means the scale factor for the sides would be 9. So the scale factor for the volumes is 27. We cube root that to find the scale factor for the sides would be 3. And then we square that, 3 squared is 9. So that means the surface area would be 9 times larger. So now if we work backwards to find the surface area of the smaller one, we just divide by 9. So we're going to do 576 divided by 9. And 576 divided by 9 is equal to 64. So that means the surface area of this cuboid is 64 centimeters squared. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So this time we've got a similar shapes question that involves ratio. And similar shapes questions quite often are linked to ratio. So you might get a similar shapes question with ratio. And I'd highly recommend having a look at the practice questions today because there'll be more questions there that involve ratios. So we've got a hexagonal prism C and another hexagonal prism D. And we're told the ratio of the length of C to the length of D is 9 to 2. So in other words, if the length of C is 9 centimetres, the length of D is 2 centimetres. Or if the length of C is 18 centimetres, the length of D is 4 centimetres, and so on. And we've been asked to find the ratio of the surface area of C to the surface area of D. Now that's quite straightforward, because what we can do is, if we want to find the ratio for the surface areas, we'll remember that if the scale factor for the sides is n, the scale factor for the areas is n squared. So what we can do is we can just square the numbers in the ratio. So for part a, what we do is we take our ratio for the sides, which is 9 to 2, and we're going to square that, so that's for the sides. So if we want to find the ratio for the surface areas or the areas, we're going to square this. So squaring both of these would give us, and that'd be 81 to 4, because 9 squared is 81, and 2 squared is 4. So that's our answer. So the ratio of the surface area of C to the surface area of D would be 81 to 4. So for instance, if the surface area of this one was 81 centimetres squared, the surface area of this one would be 4 centimetres squared, and so on. So that's how we find the ratio of the surface area of C to the surface area of D. Okay, let's have a look at part B. So part B, we want to find the ratio of the volume of C to the volume of D. So you can probably guess what we're going to do here. If we know the ratio for the sides is 9 to 2, the ratio for the volumes, we just cube these. So 9 times 9 times 9, 9 cubed is equal to 729. So it's going to be 729. And 2 cubed, well, 2 times 2 times 2, 2 cubed is equal to 8. So it's going to be 8. So that means the ratio of the volume of C to the volume of D would be 729 to 8. So for instance, if the volume of C was equal to 729 centimeters cubed, the volume of D would be equal to 8 centimeters cubed. If the volume of C was equal to 7,290 centimeters cubed, the volume of D would be equal to 80 centimeters cubed, and so on. Okay, let's have a look at our last question. So our last question says, two solid paperweights are mathematically similar. The smaller paperweight has got a length of 8 centimeters and weighs 250 grams, and the larger one has got a length of 12 centimeters. And we've been asked to find out how heavy the larger paperweight is. Now, this is a calculator question, and I want you to give this a try now, so press pause and try this question. Okay, so if I was to try this question, the first thing I would do is I would just do a little sketch. Now, we're not told what shapes the solid paperweights are. Um, they could be spheres, cones, they could be um, irregular uh, solid shapes, but one's enlargement. Uh, they could be statues, you know, the, the Eiffel Tower, smaller Eiffel Tower and a bigger Eiffel Tower. It could be anything at all. I've just drawn this little sketch here of a smaller cuboid and a larger one, just to help us visualize this, just to sort of, whenever I'm explaining it, just to sort of be able to show you what I mean. So we've got here, the smaller paperweight has got a length of eight centimeters, so the length for the smaller one is 8 centimeters and the length for the larger one is 12 centimeters. So we've got our two paperweights and we've got their lengths. One of them is 8 centimetres and one of them is 12 centimetres. Now again, they may not be cuboids, I've just drawn this just to sort of show us, but let's find the scale factor for the sides. So let's do 12 divided by 8. And if we do 12 divided by 8, we can find the scale factor for the sides. And 12 divided by 8 is equal to 1.5. So that means the scale factor for the lengths is 1.5. So the scale factor of enlargements for the sides is 
Now, in this question, we were told how heavy the smaller one was. The smaller paperweight weighed 250 grams. Now, because they're solid paperweights, we're really interested in the scale factor of enlargement for the volumes here. So we're going to do 1.5 cubed. So we're going to do 1.5 cubed, and 1.5 cubed is equal to 3.375. So that means the scale factor for the volumes would be 3.375, but because they're solid glass paperweights, it also means the scale factor for the, the masses of them would be 3.375. So if we want to find out how heavy this one is, we can just multiply the mass of the smaller one by 3.375. So if we do 250 multiplied by 3.375, that's equal to 843.75 grams. And that's it. So that's how heavy the larger paperweight is. And that's it. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at similar shapes. We've looked at if the scale factors for the sides is n, but for the areas, it'd be n squared. And for the volumes, it'd be n cubed. It's very important to remember that. And if you've got those window pens, maybe jot that on your window as well. And you know, keep, remember that key information. So I really hope you found this video useful. In the description below, there's a link to the practice questions. Give them a shot as well, because these similar ship questions, again, the situation, the context that they may appear in may change a bit. So it'd be quite useful to have a go at those practice questions. The 65 days going to GCC Maps exam. You're doing phenomenally well. Keep up the good work. And I'll see you tomorrow at 3 o'clock for the next video. Cheers. Bye.